welcome to the Teaching Corner. Today I'm going to take you on the road with me and I'm going to show you what it's like to be an itinerant teacher for the deaf and hard of hearing. So this is my itinerant classroom. This is where I keep all the folders, screens, manipulatives, things that I'm gonna need for students. It's a little, it's just a thing that you can get in the suitcase area. I think I got this one at Walmart. It has a little thing that moves up and down so I can pull it, it's on wheels. And then I also have my computer bag. Because I have four students here at this school, I'm at this school longer than I am the other schools, so I use this school and the Wi-Fi at this school to be able to check my email, to do things that I need to do online, work on IEPs, things like that. Um, depending on your school, your district, whatever, that might be something you need to consider is making sure you can get a password so you can actually get online and work on some of the things that you need to do. Um, another thing that I have that I, you briefly saw for a second is a notebook. Um, and I put all of my students with dividers in the notebook and then that and I have the dividers with pockets so I can put this day's lesson along with the cards that I'm going to be needing for our Orton Gillingham lesson or whatever it is that we're doing if it's reading comprehension or something like that I keep it in the pocket I also have a sheet of paper and on it it has columns and it has today's date and then and it has the data that I'm keeping for a particular child and a section for comments so I can comment whether or not a student had their hearing aids if the batteries weren't working when the last time was that they changed them if there's been any problems in class if I need to contact the parent if I have contacted the parent you just want to make sure that you document everything that you do so that uh, later when uh, if anything were ever to come back on you you can show your documentation and exactly what was said or what was done um, it covers you uh, in case there's ever any question about what happened. I'll show you really quick one of the pieces of paper that I take notes on um, and then also show you how that I do ratio data. One of the things for IEP goals you want to make sure is that you've got something that you can actually like give a grade on or a percentage or something like that. So I'll show you a quick and easy way that I do that. So here's one of my students' uh, things, and on it, it's just got a place for the date, what it is that we worked on that day, the percentage that they got correctly, and then any notes that I needed to make on the student or things that I needed to make sure that I remembered. So in order to do ratio data on my students, if I give my students something like this and they read it correctly, I'll just put a line through it, and then if they had particular trouble with something, I'll draw a line like this. Um, or if I completely had to give them the word, I might circle the word. And this just allows me later to go back and count the number of words that were supposed to be read and then, you know, count the number of errors that were made. I put the number of words that were read correctly over the total number of words. And then when you divide the top by the bottom, that gives you a percentage. So then you can say, okay, today this child got you know, I don't know, 82% or whatever the percentage was. So that's one way that you can do ratio data. I'll show you on an older student what I do as well. Here's a sheet that I was working on with some middle school student, with a middle school student. And so again, the, the green is what the student, they're allowed to pick 10 out of 20 so that the, the green ones are the ones that they picked and then two out of the four and then three out of the six for the sentences. But any of the red marks you see is where I had to help the student um, with the word. And so again, when I go back and I tally, and in these, because we're older and we're dealing with morphology, I just count the words that have the actual um, morph morphine that we're working on. And uh, I don't count every single word like I do with the younger students, but that allows me to get a ratio um, of how many words with the particular morpheme that we're working on they got correct or incorrect and then I can use that to give a percentage. So I hope following me around today was fun. If it was, please like, share, and subscribe and I'll see you later. Bye!